Well, Homs, uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, Homs is the third largest uh, city in, uh, in Syria. It, it takes, uh, as a province, it, it takes the central part of Syria from the Mediterranean to the Iraqi borders. Uh, as a city, uh, it just uh, has had many assets, uh, including very nice weather, uh, um, ample agricultural land, uh, open fields. Uh, was uh, was center for textile uh, industry uh, in in the 50s, uh, and uh, it is a city that is quiet. Could be to some extent uh, very dull, uh, but also enjoyed a, a strong community and a, a very nice uh, social life. Um, as a, as as a, the city progressed since since as as the whole country, I I think Homs is uh, uh, when we talk about Homs is just an example of uh, the fourteen other Syrian cities, uh, and uh, it could be generalized. But uh, in terms of changes and transformations, uh, it happened since uh, since the recent history since the the. The, the end of uh, Ottoman rule and afterwards the Sykes-Picot Agreement Pact and uh, uh, the French mandate basically, which transformed all the Syrian cities in, in terms of planning. It, um, it introduced, uh, introduced the modern planning to, uh, to the old Islamic city. And in that sense, uh, it, uh, it created uh, a juxtaposed uh, town to the central core. Um, the, the, new, the newly built neighborhoods were sprawling outside the walls of the old city and uh, in that sense uh, we've got two centers, uh, the old one and where, where an old square, uh, an old clock is there and about I think 200 meters, another tower block, uh, tower clock as well, which is called the new tower clock and the old tower clock. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, the way the city prop um, developed its uh, its uh, planning, uh, it ha it, it, we moved from the closely knitted urban fabric that we've got in in the old core into the boulevard housing and uh, commercial center, and afterwards the the urban sprawl, which is uh, slums and uh, and social housing projects. Uh, those are the most segregated parts of the city. Those are just, you know, we're based on uh, um, segregation based on uh, sect and uh, origin, people from the rural areas or from the city, uh, people who just, you know, where different confessions or different uh, sects had uh, their own uh, designated areas to live in. Uh, and in that sense, we had multiple cities within one city. Uh, as I said, it could be generalized to the whole Syrian situation, and now we're witnessing that <laughs> across the globe, I think, not only in Syria. Well, the municipality is, uh, of course, is the city authority, which, is, which gave uh, the city planning decisions and, and orders. Uh, in Homs, uh, we had uh, we had a governor recent 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 governor uh, before uh, before the war, which, um, um, who introduced um, a master a master architecture plan called Homs's Dream, uh, which was aiming to raise to the ground the rest of the old quarters and uh, uh, replace it with tower blocks and commercial center. I think the situation usually the, the the usual pattern is that you've got a new newly comer uh, who will be obviously new to the to the life of the city, new to the norms, new to the uh, 
to the having developed the attachments that you've got as a as a citizen a citizen of the place, and in that sense, uh, of course, uh, they will have different perspective and different behavior until they just you know develop the same attachments you have or you know plug into the system of of the place, and in this sense, uh, they of course will behave in certain you know different ways and have different perspectives and will ha will suffer from discrimination on this basis so it's it, it, it runs both ways just uh, it's it's not discrimination without a reason but the reason of course is not uh, it cannot be cannot be uh, uh, treated with dis discrimination because the more discrimination you 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 face those people, uh, the less attachments they will have. So you have this, a full cycle of uh, of uh, the, sa the same situation. It will never end, and that's what happened in in our cities. Uh, in, like I said. Uh, uh, Hand in hand with the transfer, with the, the architecture and urban tra transformation that happened uh, inside uh, and started from the removal of the social fabric and urban fabric in the old core. Well, uh, six, over 60% of, uh, of the city is, is mass destroyed, so we've got uh, complete neighborhoods. Uh, which are just pancaked uh, into just a, a complete uh, rubble and destruction uh, on side of the roads, and uh, you've got neighborhoods or adjacent uh, housing units and uh, and buildings that are, are are called partially destroyed, which are up to forty percent uh, destroyed. And finally, you've got the 20, up to 20% uh, damages on buildings which were now re-inhabited. Those buildings were re-inhabited. Uh, but half of the city remain, remain in rubble at the moment. I think, uh, first of all, nature should be integrated again, not in, in, in the terms of, you know, creating parks and, you know, just uh, having greenery. We have to, uh, Homs is, as, uh, as all old cities, was built on a river. And this river now uh, never runs in the city. All the irrigation network, which dated back to, to Hellenistic times and Roman times, were just excluded from the city. Uh, because and and even the the the, the manufacturing uh, the, because we had uh, uh, some kind of industries small industries based on the irrigation network along with the irrigation network those uh, those production uh, those production spots were lost as well uh, we have to reintegrate as well uh, the old models, the old craft of building. Uh, like I mentioned in the talk yesterday, we, we I made a reference as well to Vitruvius' uh, principles, the three principles, which were I mean, the manuscript is the the oldest manuscript written about architecture. Uh, since that time, and it still makes sense that buildings should be firm and uh, and and uh, have utility and and uh, aesthetic uh, aspects, and we've lost that in in our uh, in our modern uh, approach towards architecture because of the building industry because we've lost uh, uh, we no longer depend on local building materials we don't we no longer involve local. Uh, Building crafts and, and expertise, uh, and, and with that we've lost a whole uh, a whole class of production and people and and part of the urban fabric, a whole layer of urban fabric and social fabric in this sense. So we have to uh, we have to reintroduce that to our building, and, 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 and I think this is the only way that it, it, we can make a real change on on, uh, on um, social social level. Well, restore the identity for, uh, first and foremost. We, have, we, we are suffering from an identity crisis. We are fl that's why we are flooding into re Europe for, for a new beginning and for a new future. We have to reattach ourselves 
and reorient ourselves into into our own identity and our uh, our own values, which were expressed in the way we built, as everybody else had their their own heritage, their own their own self expression. And uh, we now we look at heritage as if it's just you know um, something of the past, something that we just restore and uh, admire and appreciate and make some profit with uh, tourism uh, projects out of it. But it it should be uh, as, as a way of expression, self expression and self identification. Uh, also, it should for. Um, most importantly, it should rebuild and restore the social fabric we had, the families, uh, the families units that were part of the safety net of uh, of uh, the society, uh, which was, in, which included um, businesses, which included works, meaningful uh, production modes, like uh, I mentioned to you, um, social solidarity, and all of that could could be found and enhanced and perpetuated by the way we build. Yeah. I'm not saying that architecture is the only reason, I'm not saying that it's the only solution. I'm saying that it is a channel, a very key aspect of, uh, of the way we should look at things and, or, or approach uh, the problem and it creates patterns that could be perpetuated or it could you know, also alter certain patterns uh, into different directions but of course it, it depends on people it depends on on intentions it depends on on values but on the other hand without it uh, there would be no uh, no real chance for me uh, the analogy with with uh, with agricultural land could explain the idea if you've got uh, a fertile la land and you paved on the land, there is no way that greenery could, uh, could, uh, you know, emerge from this pavement you made over. But if you left the land, you removed this this uh, uh, layer of cement over it. There is a way that it could, you know, regenerate itself. So in this sense, architecture can, you know, make the space for the fertile land or the land to be, you know, reclaimed again.